Are we ready to learn how to season these bad things? Okay, guess what? I gotta wash my hands again. So I wanna take it. Seasoning is, is one of my favorite things to do. I, I, I like spices. I'm a really, really, really spice dude. <laughs> Call me the spice man. He's so spicy. And we, uh, we put together our own rubs to give you a different taste. Uh, a good barbecue, from my standpoint, the meat should stand alone. That means you shouldn't have to put a sauce on it in order for it to taste good. So that where, that's where your brines, dry rubs, and that things, those things come in, 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 into play. And Chef Greg has a brine for us. He's going to show you how to put together a spice rub with the mixes that he bought. Can everybody say Chef Greg real quick? Oh, good, because this is driving me nuts. Yes, my name Mine fell off. Yeah. Man, this is driving me nuts. Anyway, a brine is something that you use to, to penetrate the meat, okay, that you want to pen penetrate the meat. Your brine should be used, it, you know, it depends on what you, you like, okay? And also, a brine, it, you're going to make it a, just a little stronger than you would normally season your meat. Why? because it needs to penetrate the meat. So how we're gonna do this is, I'm gonna tell you, onions chopped, minced garlic, orange juice, lemon juice, sea salt, pepper, uh, green onions, fresh oregano, jalapeno pepper, and ancient red pepper. Did they, you see that? Yes. That is the brine. That's brine, all natural stuff right out of the garden at Myers. <laughs> and I didn't hear any sugar in there. I thought you had to put sugar in everything no, to make it no good. No sugar. No sugar. Now, so what we did was is that, you know, peppers and onions and all that stuff, it, you know, you dice it fine and you, you know, you put it into your bowl or whatever you want to do. But how are you going to get it to a point where it's really fine? And what I mean fine, uh, Chef Tone, I, I have one of my favorite tools that have changed my life in my hand. Looks like a paint mixer. <laughs> this, <laughs> this tool right here is called an, um, an emulsion blender. And what it does is it takes all those ingredients and turns it into you go for this it. right here. This right there, Brian. Yeah, that Brian. This Brian. Brian. Yeah, Brian. All right. The, the orange juice, the leaves, the pepper flakes. And, and it's an invaluable tool. So how long do you actually leave the meat in the brine? Ooh, Ooh great question. question. The yeah. minimum is 24 hours. Okay, that's what I want. Can you leave it in too long? No. No, oh, no. you can't leave it in too long. Good, good to know. I'll answer that quickly, no. <laughs> no, okay. no, no. One thing I wanted to interject to you with the um, brine, one thing that's really good is using the acid. Yes. So any type of juice that you can use, so lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice, what that does is it starts breaking down the proteins. So the 24 hour thing basically refers to the fact that you're breaking down the protein in the meat, which is kind of getting it ready. It's tenderizing it. It's a natural tenderizer. So you can use whatever you've got handy. I mean, don't feel you have to go run out. Most people have one of those things, you know, in the refrigerator that they can use. So that's one of the best things about a brine. It's pre-cooking, getting it going in for you. Can you see how that looks? It looks good already. That, <laughs> we, have to, we don't even need to cook so it. That, right. So <laughs> there, that, that's what your brine does for you. And it breaks down, like Dana said, it breaks down the meat and helps the meat to be tender. Can we clap our hands for that? <laughs> it is time to, we're going to season our ribs. And what we're going to do is a lot of people make the mistake of taking the pepper, seasoning the rib, taking the salt, seasoning the rib. And what that, that's doing is, is getting germs on your seasonings. So what you want to do is pre-measure your seasonings. Now, I'm not one to go, and you have the cards on how to make the ribs. I did everything per taste, depending on what you like. How many people like spicy food? Okay, well, let's see. We got a lot of people like spicy food. So we're going to throw some more red cayenne pepper in there. And so I'm going to mix that in there. How many are sweet people? Oh, man. Well, we'll throw some sweet basil in there. Okay. All right. Now, 
I'm not a kind of a person to measure. Uh, <laughs> but what I do is I do things to taste. And, and if it tastes great, then I'm good. Now I'm going to show you how to season it. When you are cooking on a grill, the biggest mistake is people under season. You have to remember that you're going to lose some of the seasoning on the grid, on the grade, right? So what I'm going to do is it's going to seem like a lot, but it really isn't. So what I'm going to do is is that I, I've made my seasonings of all that you have here. Uh, you you have the cards there, so I'm going to go really heavy, and I'm doing three at a time, and because of the ribs. I'm going to do my three, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do both sides. Okay, you want to rub the meat. You rub the seasoning in the meat. Rub your meat. Rub your meat. What? I'm not going there. All right. So, all right. So, now, as I'm doing this, I'm patting, right? But still, this is not good enough. How about this? Pull the meat like that. Stretch the meat push it in, and it's going to go back to its form, and the season is going to stay. Now, fresh minced garlic. And I'm going to throw one at you. Ginger. You have cards out there, um, out there, and it's already pre-made. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, again, it's already made in a bowl. I don't have to go. We're going to grab and we're going to put these away. These are ready to go, okay? Now, say again, you, you, it's like a brine also, if you want to come home and cook, you can do this the night before. How, how about this? Do it two nights before. The longer, the better. Wrap it up tight, put it in your refrigerator, let it sit, and then when you're ready to cook, put it on the fire. If, okay. You say low and slow. Now, about how long at low and slow do these ribs have to go? Tom, where do you like to go at? I'm like, yeah, I'm like 180. 180, 200. How long at 200 do you think it takes to get these ribs done? What you just saw is what I did. Season them. And then we cook. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to present that, and then I'm going to take it over to Tom because Tom has to cook a very great dish. That's your rip. Oh, wow. Look at that. Mm, mm. Beautiful. You, here's the cheat. Write this down. Here's the cheat. You have been cooking your ribs low and slow, say, two hours. Two hours. Okay. Three hours. Okay, say you don't have time, but they're almost done. They have a nice smoke ring. Um, they're almost up to temp. Two things that you can do. Number one, you can steam them. Okay, what is steaming? The product is done, pretty much done. You put them in a pan, take orange juice, apple juice, or whatever juice that you love. Here's the key, mix it with water. And then what you're gonna do is that you're going to not totally submerge the rib, but you're going to put the rib into the pan. Then you're going to wrap it tight, and you're going to put it on the grill, and you're going to watch it every 10 minutes because you don't want to burn. That's going to steam the rib. So, and here's your, your second thing. If you took this rib right here, and you wrapped it in foil, and just, just wrapped it nice in foil, and put it on the grill, what happens is it will continue to cook in its juices. And now, here's the big problem that people do. Now, once it's tender, you have to watch out because it, the correct way to eat a rib, per the professionals, you take a bite and pull away from, and the bone must stay. That's what they say. I like the bone out, that's just me. And so the thing is that you want to continue to check it, have it on heat. By having it in foil, cooking in its own juices, it's going to cook quicker. And so what you do is let it cook for another hour, check it, make sure it's good, take it, set it somewhere, let it rest for a little bit, and you're going to have the best ribs that you've ever had.